Welcome to Right Now Workshop Podcast, where you can write a book and change the world. I'm your host, Kitty Buholtz, and this is episode 95, Creating a Writer's Group, coming to you on Thursday, August 30th, 2018. Okay, first of all, if you're watching on YouTube, I apologize for all of the many completely white backgrounds. Our apartment still has nothing on the walls, and I don't know when we will have stuff on the walls because all of the stuff that was supposed to be on the ship was lost. Did I tell you this already? Our stuff was lost, and then it was found, which I do think is amazing grace, but it's still in California, so... <laughs> I'm not happy. I have a whole bunch of writing notebooks for the books that I was supposed to be working on starting August 1st that I specifically put in the shipment that would arrive in June so I would be totally ready. But anyway, life goes on. So what I've been working on is um, getting my book proposal ready to submit Love at the Fluff and Fold to Hallmark Publishing while they have their open submission period. I've told you about this in a couple of episodes, and I'm super excited to say that I am almost done. I really like my synopsis. I'm happy with it. My query letter is not bad. Still working on that. And now the big thing is uh, if you have been self-publishing your books, it turns out that there is not an easy way for me to find the really, really, really final version of my book in a Word document because I write in Scrivener, then I export into a Word docx document simply because I need a docx to import into Vellum, though once I upgrade to Scrivener 3, it's doing that automatically now. So I'll just create a um, Scrivener, uh, sorry, from Scrivener, create a Word document that can be imported into Vellum. Great, no problem, right? So, I mean, really, I should just have a Word document that came out of that Scrivener document, right? But then when you're doing the final, 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 making sure that everything is perfectly formatted and you see this tiny little thing and you tweak it and this tiny little thing and you fix it and maybe one or two or three typos and you fix them and now you've got a perfect document in Vellum. (laughs) And then I'm like... I don't know how to get it back into a Word document so I can send to an editor. So that's what I have to do now. So needless to say, I am um, crazy busy working on that. And the best part is I'm happy. I'm back to finding my joy in writing. Why? Because I was working on the synopsis for a book I wrote over a year ago and published like a year ago this week. And I was writing the synopsis in the wrong order, which I just think is really funny. Have I told you this before? Because I've been telling a lot of writer friends and I'm like, did I say it last week on the podcast? So yes, I'm writing my synopsis of my book in the wrong order. I'm like, wait, is that the order those things happened? So I had to go through the print book. Thankfully, I had a copy of my um, print proof here with me, not in the other shipment that isn't here. Uh, So as I'm going through it, are you like this? I stop skimming and start reading and then I'm like oh wait I'm not supposed to be doing this and like I'm crying during the scenes that are like all oh this is like sad and I love this scene and then I'm laughing in the other scenes and I'm like okay you know what (laughs) this synopsis is taking me forever because yeah anyway I really like my book and I like the world that I set it in and I'm super excited because if Hallmark publishes it first of all I love Hallmark. I love everything Hallmark. I love movies. I love the TV channel. I practically only buy Hallmark cards unless there's just no way I can get to a Hallmark store. I buy the Hallmark Christmas decorations. I just, I'm a Hallmark girl. I've even got my card, my Hallmark, you know, card carrying gold crown club member card. (laughs) I love them. So the idea of being published by their brand new publishing arm, of course, is freaking awesome. Uh, And I think this book has a really good chance. But more than that, it feels so good, you guys, to be back in a place where I love the stories. I love these characters. I can't wait to start book two. And that to me is just a huge gift. Thank you, God, because you know, if you've been listening, um, boy, I lost it. I lost my mojo and my Jojo and I lost all the Joes. They were all gone, Um, which was horrible. Um, But now I feel like I'm coming back. So I'm happy, but I have to get back to it. So let's get on with the topic here. So Um, I've been interviewing people, as you know, if you've been listening to every episode, um, 
The burnout was taking a real toll on me and three episodes a week just became too much. It just felt like um, I was going to lose my mind if I didn't find some ways to um, reduce the amount of work that I'm doing and the pressures and deadlines and stuff that I've been putting on myself. So um, for most of July and August, I've been doing one episode a week. Now I have still been interviewing people, but the reason why you don't have an interview this week is because the last few interviews I've been doing are for people who whose books aren't out yet. And so we want to save the interview until their book is out so that if you think it sounds exciting and fun and interesting, you can go right to Amazon or wherever you like to buy books and buy it right away as opposed to trying to remember next week that book's coming out. And I don't know about you, but I can't remember. By next week, I've forgotten about the book that I wanted to buy. So... So you get me again this week. I hope that's okay with you. I was trying to think of something interesting and helpful. Now, if you already have a writer's group, this may not be interesting and helpful. So I totally understand if you decide not to listen to the rest of the episode. But what we're going to talk about is creating a writer's group. And the reason why it's come to um, the four pro- forefront of my mind is mostly because I've just moved. So I've moved to another country, but maybe you've moved to another city or another state or um, my friend Elena is moving from California to Tennessee. Very exciting. Uh, Other people, you know, you meet somebody who's just moving across town. So whether you are or aren't involved in another writer's group right now, you might be trying to find some people who live near you that you could get together with more often. So what I thought I'd do is just share what has been happening in my area and um, what's been pretty much been led by my friend Amanda. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of tell you what Amanda's been doing. Um, First, she moved from... Uh, the United States to Sweden. Uh, She and her husband work with my husband at Massive Entertainment, the video game company. Very cool. Lots of fun people there. So um, she's this fun, creative person who's a member of Romance Writers of America and has been working on some books and sending them out to agents and editors and doing all the usual things, you know, as you're getting ready to try to publish your work. So she's been in Sweden for a year and she's still a member of some of her old groups in the United States. But she didn't have really anyone around here that she could meet face to face with. So she met some people at work who are also writers and they started meeting in cafes at lunch or Saturdays or after work or whenever and just writing together. Um, As I understood it, that was fun. I think I was there for one or two of them. Um, And she was saying it's fun, but we don't always get as much writing done as she wants to get done because they also, they're all nice people and they like each other. And so as you can imagine, yes, there was talking and maybe too much talking sometimes. So she was talking to those people, possibly at some of these uh, little cafe group up group meetups kind of and asking them you know do we want to do something more formal like get together regularly on purpose and do something like critique or something else now if you don't know any other people at all like no one at least Amanda knew a few people at work who were also um, writing works of fiction different different things but at least you know they were all fiction nobody was nonfiction, stuff like that um, if you have no ideas whatsoever I apologize because I think you're going to hear my computer beep at me today because I forgot to turn it off sorry <laughs> um So if you have like no one, you don't know a single soul who lives anywhere near you who writes, then what you might want to do is go down to however many branches of the library that are near you. I think probably most of us only live near near one branch, but think about how far you're willing to drive and then look at libraries and bookstores in that area. See if anybody is already hosting a writer's group, knows of a writer's group, if there are any little uh, posting on a notice board anywhere about writers wanting to create a writer's group or an open writer's group that's allowing new members, anything like that. You could probably also check on Meetup you know, the, the website where you can say, I'm interested in going hiking in the Andalusian mountains, <laughs> who wants to go, you know, that sort of thing, Saturday at 10 o'clock. Um, so there's a couple of other ways if you don't know a single soul, but first probably just look around and talk to people and see if there's anybody that you work with or live near, because the whole idea is to find a way to get together easily and regularly enough 
I have driven an hour and a half to get to a writer's meeting. And I know a lot of people have to do something like that. Uh, so that is another possibility. You can be looking for organized meetings like Romance Writers of America. They have a lot of chapters and they have organized monthly meetings. So there's also that sort of thing. But I'm talking about right now, if you needed to create your own writer's group, that's what you're going to do. You're going to be looking around, asking people, checking the library, the bookstore, and just finding out if there's anybody who wants to start some sort of formal group. Okay, so step two is deciding on creating an informational meeting. So Amanda emailed all the different people that she knew, which included my husband and me and a bunch of people at work and another young woman who lives in Copenhagen which though it's another country in Europe, it's not as much of a big deal. So Copenhagen is literally, the Copenhagen airport is literally one train stop away from me. So I'm on the Swedish side of a bridge and on the other side of the bridge is the Copenhagen airport. So this woman actually, um, she doesn't find it, you know, any stress at all going back and forth between Copenhagen and Sweden. So Amanda contacted her and a bunch of people at work and me and John. And I don't know if there's anybody else um, who is a member of this particular group right this minute, at least. And she said, would you like to get together and just have a meeting to see whether or not we would want to have meetings? <laughs> so the point of the informational meeting is just to see whether or not people are on the same page. What you don't want is to have five different people there with four different ideas of what they want out of it. You know, somebody wants to critique, somebody doesn't want to critique, they just want to do plot storming. Somebody doesn't really want to work with other people, they just want to get together and have a few minutes of chatting and then just writing individually on their laptops, you know, like having a, a nano meetup or something like that. So the informational meeting is to find out what exactly people want, how often they want it, how they think that they would like to do it. So for instance, when we got together, we met at a cafe after work and we all kind of introduced ourselves because not everybody knew everybody uh, and said what we write. So it would be helpful to know, um, for instance, if I found out that I lived really close to like three other writers and they all wrote erotica or super hot romance or um, LGBT, like that stuff's just not stuff that I'm interested in reading or comfortable reading for critique reasons. Um, so there's pretty much nothing about that kind of writing that I would be helpful to someone else. And that those people may or may not be at all interested in the kind of stuff that I write, but I, I couldn't be helpful to them, even if I was like trying to be helpful because I'm not the right audience. I, I wouldn't know what to say. And I might be embarrassed at the stuff that I was reading, which I wouldn't want to read then. <laughs> so you see what I mean? The informational meeting is to ask a lot of questions and to help people see whether or not we're all on enough of the same page that we think we could give it a try. So um, we talked about what we write, what stage we're at, you know, if there's somebody who is writing their very first book and they've only been writing for three months and there's somebody there who is a published author who's on their, you know, 20th book and they're looking for a critique group who, of people who really know exactly, you know, what a book should be, how you would find a problem, you know, how to work through pacing and that sort of thing. Um, if you had a group that was really diverse like that, that might not be helpful for everybody. That then would depend on everybody's different um, personalities and what they were willing to do, like how much one person was willing to learn to try to step up and be helpful to the other person, how much the other person was willing to um, uh, accept what help they could get and also be really helpful to another person who might be significantly farther behind as far as um, knowing how to write well. So those are other things that you would need to find out. And like I said, you know, are you a, a person who likes to get together and brainstorm uh, plot ideas and um, brainstorm? Well, I like brainstorming. I really like it. I think it's fun. And, um, and I'm not always such a fan of critique groups per se. So for instance, when I was at the informational meeting, I was, I basically was like, I'm interested. I'm not 100% sure that this is exactly what I want. 
Um, but I'm interested in trying it out and going to one meeting. Um, so you just want to make sure that everybody's trying to be honest. Also, if there, if there's just no good chemistry in the group, like maybe it just seems like people aren't really getting along and people are kind of sniping at each other. If that's happening at the first meeting, you can rest assured it will happen even more at future meetings, you know, versus if everybody seems to really genuinely, you know, be hitting it off and liking each other and stuff, that's probably going to last through future meetings. So these are some of the things that if you're going to be the organizer or the, the moderator at the beginning, um, you want to be aware of. Um, so Amanda moderated the discussion, took notes so that she could um, email people later and say, okay, this is kind of what we decided. And we had to plan what we were going to do. So um, most people wanted a critique group. So um, majority rules, and that's the direction we decided to go. Um, again, it was a discussion and kind of a majority rules sort of discussion. Um, I mean, that, you know, normally works. That's normally the way people figure things out. And so what we had decided was that we would have a two hour meeting and that four people would be critiqued and that you could submit up to 5,000 words. Uh, and then if you wanted to read it, you could, um, and then people would go around in a circle and, um, do all of their critiquing. So um, then we had to decide who are the who, four people need to raise your hand right now. Who's going to go and then look at all of our calendars and choose a date that we thought was going to work for most, most of us and decide where we were going to meet. Um, so we were thinking about continuing to meet at the cafe, but the music is loud enough that we we were afraid that we'd be shouting over top of other people and annoying maybe other customers as we were just trying to hear each other, especially there happened to be eight people in this group right now. And so that would be um, difficult for people at one end of the table to hear everybody at the other end of the table. So we decided that um, we would meet in Amanda's apartment because she was willing to host. And uh, so Amanda wrote down all the details and that was the end of step two, the informational meeting. So step three was the organizing. So again, Amanda was the person who spearheaded it and that kind of leaves her with, unless somebody else steps up and says, oh, let me help organize. I like organizing things or whatever. The person who's most interested in getting people together, they're going to kind of end up being the person who does a lot of the work, at least in the beginning. So just keep that in mind. If you're looking for a group where you don't have to do that, then you're going to be looking for a group that's already created that is open to new members. But if you're just looking to create a group, you might end up being the one who does all of this organizing. So step three, organizing. Um, Amanda happens to use Google Docs and Google Calendar, so she continued to use what was um, familiar and helpful to her. And like I don't really use those, so people like me, we just have to kind of follow her lead and click on links when she sends emails and go, okay, so this is what it looks like. You know, I've never gotten a meeting reminder in Google Calendar before, but I got it. It made sense. I was like, okay, great, done. <laughs> So she created an event with a time, date, and location and sent it out as an email. Um, and I think that there are automated things in Google Docs that she can click on buttons and send, you know, a reminder two weeks beforehand and one week beforehand that go out automatically, I think. I'm not sure because I don't really use it myself. Um, and so she created folders for each of the four people who were going to have their work critiqued. And then she reminded them, uh, be sure to upload your document into this folder uh, at least one week before the meeting so everybody has time to read it and um, give you some feedback. And then again, there was possibly, because it's Google Calendar, there was possibly uh, buttons that she could click in order to send out uh, additional automatic reminders. So she personally didn't have to, but I know that we did get um, extra emails. And then there was another email that went out the Friday before the Monday meeting. Basically, just remember, make sure you have your document uploaded if you're one of the four people and if you're one of the if you're everybody else, <laughs> um, make sure that you are downloading and critiquing all this stuff before Monday. And then was there anything else that w happened right then? Friday before the Monday meeting, there was another email. Yep. So everybody downloaded all four doc documents then, except for, you know, the people who were being critiqued. They only had to download the three because well, theirs was the fourth one. Um, 
So everybody downloaded all the documents and then some of us preferred to print and handwrite on our notes and other people opened in Word and used track changes. And then everybody either um, emailed the document if they used track changes or brought the printed document with all of their notes written all over it to the meeting. And then we did step four, the first meeting. Okay, so for our first meeting, the point was to be a critique group. Now, there's also um, a, a certain amount of welcoming people in and taking off your coat and your shoes and settling in and is there anyone allergic to the cat and who would like some water or some tea? And so you have to keep in mind that that two hours is not going to be exactly 120 minutes. Um, but whatever you can do to keep the extra chit chat to a min to a minimum or having people show up 10 minutes early or something like that. Um, but also keep in mind that if it's not fun, if, if nobody gets to talk at all, except for critiquing, and then it's like, hurry up and get out. Cause now we all have to go to bed and get up for work in the morning. Um, that, that just might make the whole thing a little bit less fun. So part of what you might want to be considering is, how long would it take for us to be focused on doing what we came here to do, but also enjoy it? So for instance, um, we had three of the four people were able to make it to the meeting. One person was out of town. And so we had three people who had works of four to 5,000 words that we were um, commenting on. Nobody, I was glad because I'm not really a read it out loud and then critique it kind of person because I'm like, we already all read it. So <laughs> that's just me. So I was also very glad that we didn't read it because it would have just taken all this extra time. And, um, and we already, as it turned out, took two Two hours and 45 minutes to critique three four to five thousand word documents so mostly it was like um, a chapter from people's various books and stuff the one person it was most of a short story so <laughs> the thing about that first meeting is that you have to figure out what worked what didn't what did we like what did we not like uh, what do we want to change um, do we need to change the length of what people are um, able to submit like was it the length that made it too long or was it the amount of time that everybody was individually talking about a story like maybe there needed to be a, a timer set and everybody you know can I'll give you five minutes you know give everybody five minutes or seven minutes or whatever to give all of your comments to the person and then that's it you're done talking um, because we did spend a lot of time on a lot of comments um, but if that is the way that you want it then it's perfect right so is the length of the documents working for you guys is the way that you critique it um, is it, like, did you have a cutoff and everybody only got five minutes? And so when you went around the circle, you know, if there's five people there and one of them is the person getting critiqued, then five minutes times four other people is 20 minutes plus, you know, a little bit of going back and forth after everybody has given their final comments. So that's at least 25 minutes right there. Um, and I think that we were spending more than five minutes per person since it took us two hours and 45 minutes to critique three pieces. So um, in addition to how the actual critique went and that sort of thing, like do we have to do what we did, we decided four people at 5,000 words was too much. And all of us did have to go to work the next day. So we were like, oh, okay, wow, we, we really can't stay out this late anymore. Um, so we decided that next month we would try it with just two people, but still leave the word count that can be up to 5,000 words. Now there is one other person who couldn't come and she had a very short piece and actually wasn't part of a novel. It was um, for a different type of media. And it would be something that we felt we could um, critique relatively quickly. Uh, so we are still technically going to critique three pieces next month, but only two of them will be really long. So the length, the number of people who are actually um, being critiqued, um, how many people show up at the meeting, like did not everybody show, did 
um, even more people show? Is it too many people? Uh, is the location working? So for instance, um, Amanda was lovely to host and she had a lovely apartment and it was all very nice for everybody except my husband who is allergic to her three cats. So he made it for about two hours, but those last 45 minutes he was, he was really struggling. So we decided that for a while at least we would try a rolling location. So next month it will be at our apartment. The month after that it will probably be at our other friend's apartment. So the nice thing about that too is that one person doesn't have to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm in charge of this every time and I can never go out of town or be sick or whatever, you know, and nothing can come up in my life because I'm the place where it's held. Uh, so this will be really nice, I think, because everybody will have a shot at, um, at the fun of hosting without somebody being um, responsible for hosting every single time. Um, what else did we do? And then we were trying to decide, okay, so how is the timing working for us? And pretty much everybody was like at most once a month. So what we decided to do is that we would put it on the calendar for four weeks from now. And if something came up where like half the group or something was like, oh, sorry, you know, one person's out of town working, one person's sick, something else, and we need to postpone, like we'll still in the, be in the space that we want to, which is critiquing every four to six weeks. Weeks. So it gives us the room to push it back a week or two and still be like in kind of a timing that we all felt was very comfortable. Uh, so, so that was the way that we decided it. But these are all the kinds of questions that you would want to be asking people and have everybody talking about at the end of the first meeting. Now, in addition to all these things, you would want to have some guidelines. Not everybody critiques the same. Not everybody um, brainstorms the same. Not everybody has the same um, uh, personalities that mesh well together as far as what they're looking for in critiquing. So, for instance, I kind of interviewed with a critique group once where they... Um, they self-described as being brutal and they're like, you have to be okay with people being really brutal about your work because people are really trying to make sure that they're pushing everybody to get really much better. And then I, I had to think about it a little bit and basically all I could tell them was I definitely like the idea of getting much better and quickly. Um, I'm not 100% sure what brutal looks like or feels like in your group of people. I know a lot of these people, so I sort of can't imagine it would be um, uh, such a burden that I couldn't take it, but like I, I couldn't be sure because I hadn't experienced it. So, uh, so if that's the kind of group that you want to create, you would need to be clear about that with people. Um, if you wanted a, a group, like the way that I tend to be more comfortable in groups is that the rule is, um, the first thing that you say has to be something genuinely positive. Like I really liked the way you blah, 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 blah. Um, and so if I'm ever in a group where I'm the one leading it, in this case, I felt like, you know, Amanda was the one leading it and really she was the one who knew people. So I felt mostly like I was just going to be, you know, one of the members and not be too pushy or forceful with an opinion or whatever, you know, you don't want to run over people. And this, this, in my mind, this is her group. And so her, her we all got together to decide what the rules are. But anyway, I do sometimes have too strong of a leadership personality. So sometimes I need to just kind of back down. And this is a case where this isn't necessarily exactly the perfect way that I would do things for me. Um, but it worked out really well that a lot of things were um, quite nice to me. Um, so one of the things that seemed like everybody was quite happy to tell the other people the things that they really genuinely liked about their work. And then, then we were like, um, these are the things that I saw that I didn't understand, or this didn't make sense, or I couldn't figure out how old this person was, or I couldn't figure out when or where I am in time. Like, is this a fantasy? Is this real world? Is this like a medieval feel of something? Cause I can't really tell, um, you know, that sort of thing. So you're asking questions and, trying to help the other person to see where you as a reader got confused and let them figure out, you know, what, what is the solution for that? I personally think that it's um, not very helpful to tell other people, you should blah, blah, blah. 
I think you should blah, blah, blah. Because um, your idea might be helpful to them, but you could say, for instance, one idea that I had about getting around this problem would be da, 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 da. Because it comes off a lot more like I'm trying to be helpful instead of I'm telling you what to do. And I think that that's important because there are so many different personalities and so many writers do tend to be introverts, um, perhaps somewhat or a lot shy. And you don't want to run over people or make them feel like um, people don't like my work and they're telling me what to do and they don't even understand, you know, what it is that I'm trying to say. And, and maybe you're too shy to really come out and say, yeah, that's not really where the story's going. I'm sorry that you thought she was a ghost. I can work on that, but don't tell me about your, this is what I should do to fix it because that she's not a ghost. Therefore your solution doesn't make any sense to me. So there's a certain amount of not being defensive, trying to get around your shyness and, and let people know, oh, okay, yeah, no, you misunderstood. I'll try to make that more clear. But also <clears throat> as the person who is giving feedback, um, I think that it's best to be encouraging, tell people what they're doing well, and then giving suggestions, not shoulds or, or that sort of thing. Um, and then sometimes somebody will like, um, at our meeting on Monday, there was, the, the issue was, is that it was a short story with a word length limit. And so everybody felt like, it seemed like everybody felt the story really picked up in the second scene. And we're like, well, if you only have 7,000 words to tell the story, and it took us 1,500 words to really get into the story, then maybe, you know, do you want to start somehow in the second scene? Do you want to just trim the first scene and make it really condensed so that we, you know, can see how you're starting this off in the world, but it doesn't take us so long to get to the point where we're like, holy cow, look what's happening. I, I didn't even know, um, like there was a couple of things where it was, you know, the fourth page in before you realize that the world was this kind of a world where these sorts of things happen. And you're like, Oh, well, that totally changes how I'm reading the story, which is great if it's a novel and you've got 400 pages, but if, you, if you've got 7,000 words, and so what is that, 15-ish um, pages? Um, no, um, double that, right? 30, <laughs> something like that, 30 pages. Um, then suddenly you're thinking, oh, okay, no, it's really got to get uh, the whole story then would need to be more condensed. So... Um, all of these things are helpful to the person. We just don't want to say, I think you should just cut off the, the first scene. It's much better. And is, as I think what happened on Monday is that people were like, well, you could do this or you could do this or you could do a combination of those two things. And I think the author, in her mind, she knows how the story is supposed to go. And I think that she said that she came up with an idea of how to fix what we were all sort of experiencing with a combination of our ideas. Now, see, the great thing about that is, is that because they were all just ideas for her, she could come up with the better, in fact, probably the best solution. And without having people, you know, having said, oh, just do this, just do that. You should do that. You see what I mean? So that's the way that I do it. Now, obviously, if you get together with a group of writers and you all have the same personality and the same expectations and it's different from mine, then it doesn't matter <laughs> because the whole point is, is that if all of you are able to work together and help each other to become better writers and put out better stories, that would be the goal, particularly if it's a critique group. Like I said, you could decide that what you really want is a plot storming group or some other kind of brainstorming group or just a group that gets together and writes or a group that only gets together and talks about marketing. I know that I'm part of a Facebook group that the only thing that group is about is marketing. I'm actually, come to think of it, part of probably five or six Facebook groups that it's just about how can we get better at marketing our books. So all of those things are things that you could do to create a writer's group. I hope that all together um, you found some ideas to either improve the group that you have or um, you feel a lot better about how you're going to find and or create a group of your own. So in general, if you're starting from scratch, step one would be looking around libraries, bookstores, meetup group, 
asking people at work, talking to people at church, um, people who are your neighbors, whoever it is that you talk to, finding some people who live close enough that you could meet regularly. Step two, have an informational meeting and just have everybody introduce themselves. What do they write? Where are they at? What are their expectations? What do they want out of a group? If it seems like there's enough common interest to move forward, then you can have somebody start organizing and uh, creating um, all the steps to get to the first meeting, you know, the when, the where, and uh, how many words and how many people and that sort of thing. And then step four, the first meeting, and then reiterate, or, or sorry, iterate again at that point, make whatever changes need to be changed uh yeah, whatever changes need to be changed. Make whatever changes necessary for um, the following meeting to be even better, clearer, um, uh, going over less time, uh, you know, going, oh, I can't talk, going over time less. So we went 45 minutes over. Um, starting at a different time, we actually decided that we were going to push it forward back um, instead of meeting at seven, we would meet at six thirty, and we would still say that it was only two hours. But even though that would get us to eight thirty, like I'm, I'm hosting. John and I are hosting this next one. I said, you know, if we say six thirty to eight thirty, and it goes to nine, that's still fine. But people really need to leave by nine. <laughs> so again, all of these things are uh, individual to the group and to the people, and um, make up your own rules. But in general, this should give you a jump start. I hope that if this helps you, you let me know. I would love to know that some people found a way to create their own writers group because somebody said, give this a try and do this, this, and this and see if it works. So I do hope it works for you. I hope you have a great week. Next week, we do have an interview because Catherine R. Beal has a new book coming out and we'll be talking about that next week. And we also ended up talking a lot about um, characters who have any kind of um, disability, handicap, um, being differently abled, uh, as I think might be the latest politically correct way to say it, uh, and, um, and how to bring out um, a sense of, of normalcy within the character creation that is what people in this or that situation actually can do or would do or how they would behave or what they would look like or you know all the different things were because we were talking about um what's the word uh you know when we're all different diversity we were talking about diversity a little bit um but we were talking about how it seems like, well, you know what? I'm going to save it for next week. <laughs> it was a really interesting discussion Catherine and I had, and hopefully it will be interesting to you as well. So that will happen next Thursday. And uh, in the meantime, I hope you have a great week. Happy writing. I'm off to get my book proposal to Hallmark Publishing. Woohoo! Very excited. And uh, to enjoy my rainy day in Melma and maybe have some hot chocolate. So I hope that the weather is whatever you want it to be, wherever you are. And we will talk to you more later. Bye.